This presentation concerns binomial probabilities and how we use them in problem solving. So here's a question. We are told by a candy manufacturer that 25% of the pieces manufactured are green. If five are selected, what is the probability that exactly two pieces are green? So our first question is, how can I arrange the pieces so we have exactly two greens in total? So it could go first green, second green, third not green, fourth not green, fifth not green. That's one possibility, but there's several others. So what would they all look like? Well, here we go. Green on the first and the second, green on the first and the third, green on the first and the fourth, first and fifth, second and third, second and fourth, second and fifth, third and fourth, third and fifth, fourth and fifth. So in essence, we have five choose two. Now, why is that? There are five locations, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. We have to select two locations for the greens. So how many ways can we select two locations out of five? Of course, that would be five choose two. So here are our probabilities. If it goes green, green, other, 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 probability of green is 0.25, green is 0.25, other 0.75, other 0.75, other 0.75. So this next one, green, other, green, green is 0.25, other is 0.75, green is 0.25, other is 0 0.75, 0 0.75. You'll notice in each of these cases, there are two greens and three others. Each green is 0.25, but each other is 0.75. So we have two greens, 0.25 has to be there twice. We have three others, 0.75 has to be there three times. So our probability for each case is going to be 0.25 to the second, 0.75 to the third. So here's our question. 25% are green, probability of getting two out of a sample of five. So we asked the question how many combinations are there, and we saw in a previous slide that there's five choose two ways of doing that. Five slots, select two slots for green. Probability of each combination, well, it was green, green, other, other, other. So green had to be there twice, 0.25 to the second. Other had to be there three times, 0.75 to the third. And then putting them together, probability of getting exactly two green in a random sample of five, we have, of course, five choose two, 0.25 to the second, 0.75 to the third. We want to compute this, and we will go to Excel to do that. So here are the things we need. We need five choose two, 0.25 to the second, and 0.75 to the third. So how do I have Excel do 5 choose 2? Equals combin, parentheses 5 choose 2. How do we get 25 to the second power? Equals 0.25 to the second power. And to get 0.75 to the third power equals 0.75 to the third power. And we need to multiply all those together. So I'm going to say equals product these three, and our result is about 0.2637. So 0.2637 is our theoretical probability. 25% are green. The probability of getting exactly two out of five should be 0.2637. We want to check that. So how can we check that? Well, one good way is to run a simulation. So we're going to go to Minitab. And I have a million numbers in C1. They come from a binomial distribution with five trials. Probability of success on a given trial is 0.25. So if that's the case, I have this trial. We had five, but only one of them were green. Here we had five items, five candies, zero were green. Here we had five candies, two were green. And on the bottom one here, we had five candies and four were green. Obviously not a likely outcome, but a possible outcome. We want to use these numbers to determine our approximate probability, our relative frequency, of getting exactly two green candies out of five. So we're going to run a table for those numbers. I have a million numbers. Of those, how many had exactly two green candies? 263763. Three. So we can use that to get the relative frequency of success, which gives us that probability. Now, that's not exactly right, but what the law of large numbers tells us is as the number of trials gets increasingly large, the theoretical frequency gets closer, and, excuse me, the relative frequency gets closer and closer to the theoretical probability. Our theoretical probability was 0.2637, and you can see that our guess, our simulated answer, is remarkably close to the theoretical probability. Okay, here's our rule. 
n independent trials, probability of success is p, the probability of x successes is determined by n choose x, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. And I usually replace 1 minus p with q, and I say p is the probability of success, q is the probability of failure, n is the number of trials, x is the number of winners, p is the probability of success, I want x winners, q is the probability of failure, I want n minus x failures. That's how we want to think of the binomial probability rule. So here's an example, again, 25% are green. If five are selected, what's the probability exactly three are green? N is five trials. Probability of success is 0.25. Probability of failure would be 0.75. We want three successes. So using our rule, probability of x successes would be n choose x, p to the x, q to the n minus x. n trials, I want x winners. Probability of being a winner is p. I want x winners. Probability of being a loser is q. I want n minus x losers. So our formula here will be 5 choose 3, 0.25 to the third, 0.75 to the second. And again, we will go to Excel to do our computation. So we need 5 choose 3. 0.25 to the third, 0.75 to the second. Let's quickly do those. Oops. 2, 5, choose 3 up here equals combin. 5 with 3 equals 0.25 to the third. And equals 0.75 to the second. Multiply all those together equals product. and we get 0 0.08789. So the probability of having exactly three successes is about 0 0.08789. Looking at Minitab, a million again. How many were exactly three? 87438. 87438 out of a million, about 0 0.08738. Uh, and our theoretical probability 08789, so you see the relative frequency is pretty close to what we expected it to be on the theoretical side. Okay, here's a spinner. You'll notice red is taking up half the space, blue is taking up a third of the space, and it appears to me that green is taking up a sixth of the space. So using that fact, we can say probability of red is a half, blue is a third, green is a sixth. So the probability of not getting green then would be five sixths. With binomials, we need the probability of success and the probability of failure. So here's our question. If the spinner is spun 12 times, probability of getting exactly two greens, what would that be? Well, we have 12 slots. We've got to select two greens. So it could be green, green, followed by a whole bunch of not greens. So green, green, not green, not green, not green, 10 not greens. So how many ways can we select two out of 12? Uh, well, first of all, what's the probability? So green, green, a sixth is there twice. Five sixths is there 10 times. So 12 choose 2's way of selecting it, and there's the probability of getting each value. And then putting them together, exactly 12 green. 12 choose 2 ways of shuffling it up. Green, green, there twice, a 6 to the second power. Not green, not green, not green. Probability of failure is 5 sixths, and I need 10 failures in my example to go ahead and get our answer. So uh, we will again go to Excel to do that. So here we go, equals combin, 12 with 2, equals 1 sixth to the second, equals 5 sixths to the tenth, and we want to multiply all those together, so equals product of those three, and we get 2, 9, 6, 1 approximately. And can we check that on many tab? A million, this time n is 12, p is a sixth, which we write as a decimal, 0.1666 and a whole bunch of six is seven. We want to do the table for those values. And our question is, how often did we get two? And then we can see exactly two green showed up 295,260 times out of a million, or 0.295260. And that's relatively close to our theoretical solution that we had before, which was 29609.